Excellent play, flash handball by Goggin. And another one who's been uh, superb in that direction is Brownlow medalist Alistair Lord. The hand passing by Geelong in flashes has been terrific. The ball over the back is taken by Williams. He's had a host of kicks again. He boots the ball into the centre of the ground almost. Alistair Lord there has beaten Cox, who's gone down on the ground. Tries to blind turn around him. Cox regains his um, feet, but Alistair Lord goes on with it. Kicks the ball with a high punt kick into a drizzling rain, into the full forward pocket. Miller has hold of the ball, tackled by Loft. Tackled now by Anderson. Punches it clear towards Buckley. Buckley gets it over the line. Only 15 yards from the nearest behind post on the outer flank at the Richmond end. The scoreboard still shows Carlton three points in front. Three goals, three to Geelong's three goals. Knocked down by Nichols of Carlton. He gives it across to Lofts. Lofts clears it back for Carlton towards the half-back line. But another good mark is taken for Geelong. This time again by Alistair Lord who got in front of Barkley Cox. Lord is starring in the centre. Alistair Lord... Brownlow medalist with the ball on the half forward line a drop punt kick takes the ball to the full forward zone towards Fox two Carlton players up they all miss it the ball on the ground in front of the Geelong goal picked up by Hamer Hamer's kick is smothered it's kicked off the ground and it goes through for one point John Yates is showing that he's out of match form I think Polly he's dropped a couple of sitters yes he's dropped some sitters but I think his cleverness in, in getting the ball with quick handball or palms is helping our other players come into the game what do you think of him as a ruckman well, he's a good ruckman without controlling the ball well. He's inclined to punch it instead of palming it, but I think as he gets on in this game, I think he'll do better. Peter Barry about to kick out from the Richmond end. Oh, didn't kick it as well as he can. Is falling short by about 15 yards of his best, pick, best kick. It's between the half uh, forward line for Geelong and the full forward pocket. Carlton smothered the ball up through Anderson. He's playing a strong defensive game out there. And umpire Frank Swab incurs the displeasure of the Carlton fans stacking the outer because he's given a free kick to Geelong on their half forward line. Lowe is number 25, Brown is on his right. Lowe punches it across to Brown, who's down from the wing, and Brown from that wing position will boot this just about into the goal square. Anderson in the trains, uh, hands of trainers as the ball is kicked into the full forward zone. Up they fly for it. Oh, Fox couldn't get out. He was sandwiched by two. Good play by Carlton's defence, and Benetti takes the mark. Benetti goes back into the goal square. Kicks the ball out, and here it is in mid-flight. Players set themselves, no one able to pull the mark down. A chance here for uh, Buckley to come through. Uh, he uh, tries to get it to Bruce Williams. Uh, shepherding Miller off, Bruce Williams picks it up for Carlton. He's tackled by Rice. Williams has to punch the ball away. And again, it's over the line and out of bounds. About 35, 40 yards from the uh, nearest Geelong behind post. We are three minutes into the time on period in the first quarter. A free kick has just been awarded to Carlton's uh, giant ruckman, John Nichols, almost in the full-back position, and Nichols plays the ball along the um, outer side of the ground. Not a good kick. It goes towards Murray Kick, and also Brown of Geelong, but it's over the line and out of bounds. The ball has, in this first quarter, already been out of bounds 25 times. For the whole of last week, it was only out 53 times. There's a throw-in again. Nichols tries to come through using his weight. It's on the ground, picked up by Buckley of Carlton. He gives it to Cox. A punt kick by Cox puts the ball to the half-forward line. But Donaldson is out of position for Carlton, and the mark is taken for, by Geelong's Walker. Molly, you must be pleased with Walker's form yes, as centre-half back. I'm very pleased. I didn't really think Peter would do as well as he has, but his amazing anticipation and reading the players and enabling him to take a lot of marks. And look at that anticipation as shown by Goggin. This wind is really playing havoc with players' judgment. Goggin stood out like a lighthouse then and he, in the way that he um, went for that ball he could see it wavering in the air his judgment was much better than the pack behind him and he takes the mark and benefits through his skill from centre half forward with Fred Buller dropping back he uses a punt kick which is a terrific kick into the wind a colossal kick by Goggin A magnificent goal by Goggin. There he is in the centre of the picture being given the congratulations that um, piece of play deserves by Fred Wooler. He passes Cox, he passes Alistair Lord. A magnificent goal by Goggin. A torpedo punt really rocketed into the air, into that headwind. It uh, held up there as though there was no wind at all. Beautiful play by Goggin. There's the ball back in the centre again. Umpire Frank Swab bounces it. Knocked down by Geelong's by another ball in the half-forward line. Hamer comes through, takes the ball. He's tackled by Bob Crow, and the free kick goes against Carlton to be taken by Gary Hamer on the half-forward line for Geelong on the centre-half-forward position. It's a ding-dong battle in this uh, first quarter, and the scores are very close. Geelong are in front now, kicking into the wind by four points. And here's the kick by Hamer, a good kick. It's a wobbly one, takes the ball to full forward. Up goes uh, Geelong player in Goggin. It's picked up here by Rice. Uh, his kick doesn't go very far. Anderson gets it across towards Benetti. Geelong still have the ball in front of their goal. Miller comes in. He's playing the ball along in front of him. Anderson gets pushed out for Carlton. Picked up by Miller. A screw shot by Miller over his shoulder, but it's uh, dropping short. Silvani goes up. Also, uh, John Gates. What's happening? The whistle is gone. Mark. A mark to Yates. 
We'll take a good look at umpire Frank's problem. We've got a chance because when Colin Rice was slung over by a Carlton player not uh, only about 15 seconds ago, he, his boot uh, caught umpire Swab in the leg and uh, I don't think he's too happy at this moment. Here's Yates right on the boundary line trying to do as Miller did earlier in the quarter. No, there's not much excitement behind the sticks and the goal umpire slow in going for the flag. One point only. Geelong are now five points in front. 25, 26 points to 21. Geelong, four goals, two. Carlton, three goals, three. Umpire Frank Swab, cool in a crisis, but he took a nasty knock a moment ago, as we say, when Colin Rice was just about to, to share his leg off. Oh, a kick on the, in the ground by Colin Barry. He kicked the ground. Geelong come forward through Biner. He tried to punch the ball, then ran straight into a Carlton man who came out to meet him. He tries to make amends, but he can't. Either a throw or holding the ball. Anderson hands it back towards Buckley. It was a throw, and it's a free kick to Carlton right uh, back against the goal sticks. There's the kick by Buckley. A wobbly punt kick takes the ball up to the half-back line. Silvani comes in, uh, gets written into the ground, but has taken the mark. Play has been underway for just over 30 minutes in the first quarter as we wait for Silvani on the half-back line for the Blues to take his kick. A good drop kick by Silvani puts the ball to the half-forward line as the siren goes for quarter time with the scores Geelong 4-2, Carlton 3-3. And Parson receives it. Close kick is almost into the goal square. It is into the goal square. Over the back, Roy West takes it. Was very nearly marked by Tom Carroll. Just the same. Good play by Carlton and good play by West. The ball is towards Alistair Lord, but he's had a lot of steam knocked out of him. A perfect shoulder by uh, Donaldson. The ball is almost uh, in front of the Olympic stand. Alistair Lord's gone down again. Alistair Lord is down again. The ball is just in front of the line. The ball is in front of Miller and also uh, George McGrath. This time it's kicked over the line and the Brownlow medalist has run into two solid, uh, solid uh, bumps in one minute of play. Alistair Lord has been dominating the game and, and if these bumps take something out of it, it, will help, it won't help Geelong at all. As they throw in, knocked down beautifully by Nichols, coming through as strongly as Brown of Geelong, who gets onto his right foot, punt kicks it to the half-forward line, up high is uh, Willer, who uh, can test the mark, oh, there's a blue one here, Hamer's in it with lots. Willer pushes Hamer away, says, uh, don't be in it, because uh, the kick is going Geelong's way anyway. Lovely mark to Gary Hamer. Juggled it about eight times before he finally made position, but long before that, the umpire had sounded the whistle, drowned by the crowd, because they appreciated what Hamer was trying to do. He seemed to have the ball on a string, and uh, it was his mark. Hamer is at centre-half forward, a good kick by him. He's an, a mercurial player, comes in and out of the game, could get another goal on the board. Oh, it's going to score, or is it going to score? It was long enough. No, it's out of bounds. Geelong are seven goals four, Carlton four four. Three goals the difference, 46 points to 28. Nichols goes up, a double-handed knockdown towards Williams, who took a knock earlier. Goggin keeps him over the line and makes sure that the ball doesn't go upfield, that it stays in that pocket. Goggin, a star for Geelong, so is Alistair Lord in the centre. Nichols is playing well for Carlton, so is Silvani, and so is Williams. This is Anderson trying to pick up the ball. No, he decides to kick it instead, and it's across the line. So is Bill Goggin. We've had four minutes of time on in the second quarter. Carlton have had a very lean second quarter. They've kicked only one goal, one. They kicked their only goal uh, in this quarter only about three minutes ago. Bruce Williams takes a tap down from Nichols, who is killing him in the ruck. His kick is onto the half-back line, taken by Murray Kick. Murray Kick is marked by Colin Rice. Goes back for his kick now, right in front of the members' stand. Murray Kick, Carlton Wingman, comes in. Not a good kick, but it comes down towards the centre-wing position. Uh, up is Buckley, Cox behind Alistair Lord. Uh, Ward is pushed out, and the free kick is going to the Bremer medalist between the centre-wing and the half-forward line for Geelong. Lord comes in, the punt kick takes the ball down towards the full forward position, up goes Lofts of Carlton, he drops the mark, the ball is on the ground, in there is Yates, trying to come through is Peter Barry, a chance here for Goggin, Goggin picks up the ball, his tackle has to punch it away, it's close to the boundary line, only 40 yards from the Geelong goal, and it stacks on the mill here, as Fox goes down, and the whistle is gone, and the umpire is going to ball it up. He's bouncing it up just inside the line. Goggin waiting down for Nichols' uh, knock away, but it goes towards Rice. Rice is pushed over by a uh, kick, and Nichols comes through and clears the ball, despite attention from Rice, who is only half his size. The ball goes over the line, another 15 yards upfield. It's still within goal-kicking distance for the Blues, uh, for the Cats, if they can get away with the ball from the ruck. Nichols dominating again, punches it down there to Benetti. Benetti gets the double-handed knockdown, but is slung off his feet. And the ball goes to McGrath, but it'll be play on from here. Kick grabs hold of it, McGrath goes in for it again. Picked up instead by Barkley Cox. Barkley Cox comes across towards the boundary line. Is tackled by Brown, gets it across to Silvani, who's put down by Rice. The kick is upfield, and it's a free kick. Uh, it's a free kick upfield, which uh, I think was a lucky one, to be fair, for uh, Carlton. A lucky kick for them, because Rice didn't, uh, uh, wasn't vicious in his attack on Silvani. And Silvani had got rid of it only a split second before Rice put him down. It's a free kick upfield to Gill. He finds Williams. No damage done. Here is the end of the 
second quarter and the scoreboard 7-4 to 4-4 in Geelong's favour. They are three goals in front. We've been playing two minutes into time on in this third quarter. There's the bounce in the centre. Frank Swab bounces the ball up. Rucks get set themselves. Knocked down for Geelong by Viner. Puts the ball into the half-forward line. Taken by Lofts, who puts it back again to Carlton's half-forward line towards James, doing battle with Walker. Here's Nichols trying to come through. Misses the run of the ball. Picked up by Johnny James. A left foot kick by James. Screws the ball in towards the 10-yard square. Up they go. Three players contesting the mark. George McGrath in there, number 33. The ball hits the behind post, and it'll be thrown in from the out-of-bounds position in the Carlton forward pocket. And the ruck is John Nichols for Carlton. Sets himself for the throw-in. Also low. Neither player gets the knockdown. A chance for Bruce Williams, who left foot kicks the ball in towards goal. It's true, it's a goal to Carlton. Kicked by Bruce Williams to make Carlton eight goals, seven behinds, 55 points. Geelong, 9-5, 59. Four points the difference, Geelong leading. Well, Carlton still badly need another goal, but those two quick goals they've received will give them the incentive to fight on, and we hope so because the crowd is really starting to roar. Four points of difference. Viner tries to take the ball forward on his own, but Kick takes it out of his hands and kicks it onto the half-forward line. We've been playing three minutes into time on. There's only four points of difference in the sides. Carlton coming forward again. The ball bounces over Carroll's head. Carroll's only had one deliberate kick for the stick so far, and it's raced through for a behind by Roy West. Three points of difference. A most dramatic quarter. Plenty of uh, tough play in the packs. Some spiteful play behind the game. And now there's only three points separating the sides. Geelong 9-5-59. Carlton 8-8-56. Geelong, except for the first 15 minutes, have been in front throughout the game, but they look like having that ascendancy challenged as from the half-back line, a kick is given to Lowe, one of the Geelong Ruckman. Lowe kicks the ball into the centre of the ground, Barkley Cox gets up high and out marks Brownlow medalist Alistair Lord. At quarter time, the score was Geelong 4-2 to Carlton 3-3. At half time, it was Geelong 7-4, three goals in front of Carlton, who were then 4-4. Now there's only three points of difference. A big fight back by Carlton. The ball is towards Williams. He's bumped aside by, by Rice. The ball is going out towards Peter Walker. He's pushed aside by Williams. Silvani kicks the ball forward, and he finds Sankey, who's not been marked by McGrath, who could have been reported earlier in this quarter. From the half-forward line, Sankey, who has kicked a goal for Carlton, has a chance of scoring again. He's only 40 yards out. He kicks it off the side of his boot, and one flag is the result. Two points now separating the sides. 57 points to 59, and it's a real thriller. Goal scorers for Geelong. Three to Wooler, one each to Viner, Rice, Fox, and Miller, and two to Goggin. For Carlton, two each to Williams and Brereton, one each to James, Sankey, Collins, and Nichols. There's a chance here for Hamer. He's on Carlton's half-forward line, chasing the ball to the boundary line, followed by Bob Crow, number 14 for Carlton, and it's out of bounds on the half-forward line for the Blues. Two points the difference, Geelong leading. There's the ball being thrown in. Up on the ruck is Donaldson, and also Viner. Knocked down by Viner, charge for Martin Cross, who was on the ground for Carlton. He takes the ball. This kick is smothered by Devine. It's still on Carlton's half-forward line. A chance for Crow as he knocks the ball along in front of him for Carlton. On the half-forward line, he brings it back into play, picked up by O'Neill of Geelong. Now his kick uh, is not a long one. It comes back towards Viner. Viner's tackled by Collins. He uh, punches the ball away. The whistle is gone, and the free kick is going to Geelong's Paul Viner on the half-back flank position. It's been all Carlton in this quarter, really, particularly in the last 20 minutes of it. We've been playing th uh, five minutes now into time on in the quarter. Carlton have kicked 4-5 to Geelong's 2-1, but don't forget they've had the win with them, which means Geelong will have it with them in the final quarter. Viner from the half-back line for the Cats. Beautiful drop kick right down over the centre wing position. Bonetti goes up with one hand, can't hold the mark. Silvani grabs hold of Rice when he's not in possession and the free kick goes to the little Geelong Rover between the centre wing and the half-forward line for the Geelong team. On the mark is John Bonetti. Colin Rice looking for a lead from Fox on full forward. Fox gives the lead, there's the kick. Up they go for it, Silvani in front. will take the mark. Sergio Silvani, Carlton's ruck rover. A very consistent player for the Blues, has the ball almost in the back pocket position. Silvani has had nine marks, which is about double of anybody else on the field. Stuart Lord has had four. Silvani from the back line, from the half-back line, kicks the ball way up in the air. It goes as uh, high as it goes long as the siren goes. And at three-quarter time, two points separate the sides. Geelong in front, 9-5 to 8-9. The Geelong team are in front by six points. 
Well, Colin Rice, even if he hadn't got a hurt a kick earlier in the day or doesn't get another one, is at this moment a hero with the Geelong fans. He's had 24 kicks on the day and has been one of the best on the ground, and that is his uh, second goal. Twenty-four minutes of play already decided in the final quarter of the preliminary final, and the Cats are one goal in front. They come forward again, spurred on by Rice's good effort. He's played well all day too. The ball is onto the half-forward line, being chased by McGrath. The Cats are scurrying, picked up by Eric Nichols down from the half-back flank. He's on as a replacement. The ball is onto the half-forward line, marked by Alistair Lord, their centre player, and he'll take his time. And if he doesn't put his boot right into this and kick it as far as he can, he'll be letting his side down. No short passing here. It's a good long kick in front of the scoreboard pocket. Up Miller goes in front. He's taken another mark Anderson in trouble with a couple of players talking to Wooler the boundary umpire is right on the job however Miller is a specialist at kicking severe angled goals and here's another test for him coming up right now he's just inside the line he's 30 yards out it's a good torpedo punt it's a beautiful kick and he's done it again well what a beauty there's no two worries about that that was a beauty and that sealed the fight for Carlton Geelong must go into the final against Essendon next week. Jimmy, you're a brave man to make that with still five minutes of play left. Tony, I think that will give Geelong all the incentive they need. They're kicking with the wind and they won't flag now. 72 to 84, 12 points the difference. The Cats in front by two goals. Alistair Lord trying to grab hold of the ball and bring them forward. Instead, it was Pomeroy. He kicked the ball under the half forward line. Wesley Loft battling hard for the Blues. The Blues uh, looked like going the better earlier in this corner, but now the Cats with two quick goals have taken it away from them. The ball is on the half forward line. A whistle up, and it's a free kick to Benetti backfield. Benetti from the half back flank about to take his kick. The half back flank position. A punt kick down to Carlton Centre, half forward zone. No one able to pull the mark down. It's bouncing here. A chance for Nichols. No, he misses the run of the ball. Picked up by Bartley Cox. This kick doesn't go very far, but it finds a teammate out there in Maurice Sankey, who is about 55 yards out on an angle from goal for Carlton. Carlton, two goals down. As Sankey comes in, a punt kick takes the ball right to the 10-yard square. Up they go. The ball knocked away from Carroll. A chance here for McGrath. He fumbles the ball. Silvani comes in, also uh, Gill. Gill turns onto his right foot for Carlton. A punt kick in towards the big sticks, but it's off target going right across and it goes through for one point. Carlton, 11 points down. It's been a most thrilling game. At the first change, Geelong were five points in front. At half time, they were 18 points in front. At three quarter time, they were two points in front. Then earlier in this final quarter, Geelong were in front by 10 points. Now it's Geelong with two quick goals through Rice and Miller uh, getting forward, and now they hold a uh, a uh, almost two goals advantage. The ball is on the half forward line for the Carlton team going to the Richmond goal and playing well. But Geelong get the ball out through Viner to Rice. Rice kicks the ball onto the half forward line. Pomeroy takes his mark. It's Pomeroy's mark. Pomeroy on the half forward line. The Geelong camp is going crazy. Leo O'Brien's up on his feet down here in front of the uh, coach's bench as the ball goes forward into the full forward line. Up they go. Peter Barry racing in for it with Hamer. They get the ball close to the line. Fred Wool is in there with Anderson. Picked up by Miller. Miller having a shot across the sticks. It's right across the sticks and it's out of bounds the other side. Two minutes of time on already gone. Two minutes of time on already gone. Another three minutes of play possibly left. Geelong, 13-6, 84, are in front of Carlton, 10-13-73. The ball is kicked by Peter Barry along the members' wing. Goggin going up for the mark. He's unsettled by Anderson coming through, picked up by Viner. Viner's kick is a glorious kick, but it shades the goalpost by a coat of paint, and it's one point only. 85-73, to 73, still 12 points the difference. Two clear goals in front are Geelong as Peter Barry kicks the ball off straight upfield towards Silvani. Silvani can't hold on to the mark. Two men against him straight down in front. The ball picked up by, by, uh, by Williams and Williams gets it into the centre of the ground towards John Nichols. Look at him go, the big man. Boy, he's played a great game today. Nichols kicks the ball to the full forward zone. McGrath drops the mark but he regains nicely to clear the ball along the wing. That's a good defensive kick and it's out of bounds across the half-back line. The ball is in Carlton's attacking territory. Time is running out for them. Three minutes of time on already gone. The ball is picked up by Williams. Williams kicks the ball into the full forward pocket for the Blues. Coming downfield is Roy West with Carroll. Carroll breaks away. Has a flick pass out here towards Sankey. Sankey running into the goals. This is going to be a goal for the Blues. And a good goal too. 
pony. I'm not criticising umpire on this occasion, but I'd say that Murray Sankey ran about 25 to 30 yards there in his eagerness to get to the goals. And I'll say this, the umpire did give him a chance to settle. Whichever way this game goes, it'll be remembered for a long, long time. Terrific play by both sides, an excellent fight back by Carlton in the second half, particularly in the third quarter and early in this fourth quarter, and then an equally amazing fight back by Geelong when it seemed as though they were going to peg out. That goal by Sankey for Carlton has put them right back into calculations again. Four minutes of play on, or time on, have been already gone by, and it's one goal the difference. Six points the difference, and Carlton trying to go forward, but it's uh, Geelong doing that. Goggin takes the ball and kicks to Pomeroy at centre-half forward. Pomeroy, to take his kick, is back on the defensive side of the halfway line. Now he moves up and he's into attack. He kicks the ball over the half-forward line towards the flank. Bob Trow is up high. He's in front of Gary Hamer, who dropped back, and he takes the mark. It's still anybody's game. Crow's kick is up into the air a bit. It goes nearly as high as it goes long. It's onto the centre wing, and here's Rice again, an excellent player for Geelong, particularly in this last half. He kicks the ball back onto the uh, uh, outer stand wing, just inside the line, where Benetti marks nicely in defence for the Blues. Benetti from the half-back line. Four and a half minutes, four and three quarter minutes of time on gone. He passes the ball upfield and has been marked by Murray Sankey, who scored that last goal. Now he's anxious to get the ball un underway and get it into attack, and that he does. He's kicking towards Nichols. Nichols very nearly takes the mark, very nearly takes the mark. He's been paid the mark. I think he's been paid a free kick, Tony. He was grabbed across the back of the neck by George McGrath, and umpires have decided that uh, uh, McGrath did not go for the ball. It could end up a tie. Here's Nichols kick to within 20 yards of goal. Terry Callan very nearly marks. Donaldson chips in. A snapshot here by Turkey Tom. Lands it in the goal square. But waiting back there is Roy West on his own. And he takes the mark, plays on and clears along the other wing. Boy, this will give uh, plenty of people heart attacks in the crowd today. Geelong 13-7 to Carlton 11-13. Are still in front by one goal. It's six points the difference. The throw in on Carlton's half-forward line. Nichols goes in, he's almost exhausted, tries to knock the ball back, it's picked up by Martin Cross, he kicks the ball towards Carroll, who's on his own, and Carroll takes the mark, Carroll's 45 yards from goal, he's on a 45 degree angle, and a goal here, the siren could sound as he kicks it, would be a tie. It's a good kick, it's, it's, a, it's a goal. The scores are level, and we've been playing six minutes of time on. It could be a replay next week. What a rest statement I made, Tony, about to long not letting them come back. But what a game, what a ding-dong battle, and an exhibition of the game that all this crowd here really love. They've gone mad. That's Carroll's second goal. Messengers, there are more messengers on the field than there are players. Here's the bounce up now, Nichols is still on the ball, Geelong knock it forward, oh. but Silvani shocks it, he's grabbed over the shoulder, it's free kick to Carlton. Six and a half minutes of time on gone, we've been playing for 31 and a half minutes, Silvani from the back line, or from the centre of the ground, kicks the ball to the half forward line, a mark here could solve it, it's marked by John James, he marks it on the half forward line. That was a brown line middle mark, that was Parry's personified. James from centre half forward uses a drop kick, it's a beauty too, it's a long kick into the full forward line. Roy West goes up, the siren goes, and it's a tie. 